Jacob Lugo here, so, uh, Jacob Lugo. And we connect with we on Twitter, on at Jacob Lugo, in case you are using your phone during it. Uh, I'm based in uh, Bangkok, where we founded a company called Facebook Motor, together with my partner Thomas, who's also here tonight. Uh, I'm originally from Denmark, and that's everything you need to know right now. Today I'm going to talk about uh, the social media. I will first start with some history about it, and after that I will go into how measurement of all social media is changing. And in the end I will end up with a personal story and a video. Uh, it will not be that long. If you see here, you will like to, you will like to see uh, the maps as they were for back in time when the telegraph was here. Back in time when you had telegraph, you actually had a group of people in one end of the country and another group of people in other countries. And if you had to send news to them, you actually had to go to these people, they would then send them on. Uh, and then you would dis distribute them to the press and to the government and they would then distribute it to the citizens. That's kind of the old, old uh, way of doing everything. If we look at one social network today, you can see Facebook. All of the white dots that you see is actually people on Facebook, and all the lines you see is how people are connected today. Uh, so even though China is actually not on Facebook, you still be able to see uh, some of the connections from Beijing and Shanghai. And actually, everything that comes out of that will be spread to the rest of the world in the same way. So how do we measure communication today? There's a company called uh, Nielsen, that was actually founded by a Danish guy that was born in the US called Arthur. And that's how we've been measuring how media is spread since the uh, 1930s on radio. Uh, there's just three big problems with this that we can't be using today's world and today's media. The first one is inaccurate. There's only 25,000 households with uh, the TVs that actually got a unit in the US uh, that will send data back of who is viewing your program. Uh, and at what time of the day it is. So this means that uh, also based on earlier way of uh, earlier TV shows and everything, you will have a very inaccurate number of how many is actually following this. Another way is that it's old data when it's already come out because you will get this the day after or the week after or the month after and actually figure out how many people follow the show that you just saw the news uh, about this. So the last one is actually no attention. You actually don't know if one viewer of a TV show or a news program is actually seeing, uh, is actually paying attention to what they are seeing. They might be cooking, checking Facebook, going around. So a viewer is actually not really a viewer because you don't know if they have attention about it. So one th story that I will tell you is actually from uh, last week uh, when we were in Washington visiting our headquarters over there. At the uh, at eighth floor, around one o'clock, everything started shaking a lot. Uh, the boss was clapping, uh, the chairs were shaking, and all my American colleagues they actually thought that there was a new terror attack going on. I thought that someone was using a jackhammer next door, but that's probably because we never have terror attacks in Denmark. Uh, but it didn't take long to figure out that there was actually an earthquake going on that is very uncommon uh, in Washington. Uh, so what do you do in an earthquake? As Huffington Post is here, very like, what do you do in an earthquake? Normally you would either go out, figure out what's wrong, go on your table, anything like that. What I did and what a lot of people around me actually did was they picked up their phone and then they started tweeting and updating their Facebook about what's actually and that is really today's in how everything is being spent. You will see later, they actually see out a picture of how devastating the earthquake were. <laughs> this picture got very famous uh, because there was actually no big damages, but because it was so rare, there were people started panicking. And that's also why you will see uh, a very Twitter culture going on, uh, as I'll show you now. This is one of the first tweets that came out from a girl in Virginia. And from there she started, uh, from there it, all of it started. In one minute there was around 40,000 tweets uh, going on in the first minute from the earthquake actually started. At the highest point there was 5.5 thousand 
thousand tweets per second. Uh, this, it was actually a new Twitter record, but it was broken like three days ago when Beyonce got pregnant. She got like nine thousand tweets per second at that point. Uh, Facebook, they had about the earthquake, they had three million status updates about the earthquake. That's actually more than when Osama bin Laden was killed. Uh, so that's quite a big number about a rather small earthquake. But if we take a, uh, and look at how it actually went, you can see here, Virginia, where it all started. You will have the first tweet here after eight seconds. If we then scroll up and give it 30 seconds, you'll actually see that more and more people, they go here, you see the ring around it. That's the expected earthquake. So people over here on the west coast actually start to respond to tweets about the earthquake going on over here before uh, they filled anything and before it even hit New York. If we then take the point uh, where it hit New York and everything else, uh, we can actually see over here where they would also feel it or go back here and see when the ring's here, like an earthquake travel with around uh, 3 to 5 kilometers per second. A tweet will actually travel at 200,000 200, kilometers per second. So if you take the time it will take to compose a tweet and send it out, around 100, uh, kilo, 100 kilometers away from where it actually happens, the earthquake's epicenter, you will get tweets out before the earthquake will actually happen, uh, before you can feel it in that area. That's how instant we have today. So at 60 seconds and at 90 seconds, we can see greenhouse spread at like one and a half minute after anything actually happened in Virginia, you will see the tweets are all around the country. And another thing to look at is actually where the earthquake is most, uh, where it happened and where it shaked most and how you explain that, there is actually most tweets. Uh, so the less it shakes, the less tweets you get. Another thing is, uh, Homeland Security, they actually wrote out to all the American citizens on Twitter, quick, tell friends and family you're okay via text, email, social media, Twitter, Facebook, avoid calls. Because what actually happened was that all the phone networks went down because people started calling each other. I just think it's quite funny because that really shows how today it's a lot easier to just use Twitter or Facebook to communicate with your friends than all the lines like uh, the telephone. So how does this change stuff? Uh, the thing is, today you actually see live television. You will see the newscasts reading off on Twitter uh, instead of actually having a journalist out there. Because right now we actually have amateurs going around with a with a phone, and they can report directly to what happening, what's happening at that spot. Uh, so everybody can really participate in a local event. So. What we just need to figure out is what will happen in five years because right now we are close to instant. How will this change us and how instant we will we know things after they actually happen anywhere in the world? I'm going to end off with a small video that Twitter actually created about this uh, that I think is quite funny. Thanks a lot for your time.